first, we're going to kick it off with a, uh, with a keynote from, um, from HP. And uh, to speak to us this morning, we have Biri Singh, who is the Senior Vice President of Converged Cloud and the GM of HP Cloud Services. So, Biri Singh. Thank you, Jonathan. Appreciate it. Thanks so much. Good morning. How are you all doing? Great. Thanks for uh, taking the time out and joining us here. You know, before I get started, actually, I think uh, we all owe a round of applause to Jonathan and the OpenStack Foundation. <laughs> They've done a, uh, an admirable task in the last few months, uh, some great progress. You know, setting up things like this is never easy. You've got to balance true community. To me, is, it's all about transparency. And uh, I think they've done a fantastic job. So I want to thank Jonathan and, and the foundation's efforts. Uh, we've got a lot, learning a lot, lo lots more work to do. But I think it's off to a fantastic start. So again, thank you. Um, I'm going to spend some time with you this morning on um, talking a little bit about how HP is thinking about uh, the cloud space, give you an update on what we've been up to, uh, but try to frame it around what we think are the challenges around sort of really getting to a true open, um, scalable, interoperable cloud uh, and an ecosystem around it uh, for the enterprise. And by that, I mean the enterprise production workload. And so I want to talk a little bit about how we think about it, what we're learning. Uh, we've been active here now for a couple of years and uh, hope to share with you some insights. And uh, we'll go from there. So um, we've actually, I've shared this slide before. Um, you know, the way I, I want to sort of talk about this is we've all experienced this. We're living this real time. Uh, the notion of mobile and social, uh, big data, analytics, um, all coming together with the cloud to me is, is, a, is an obvious thing. But I think it's one, as you were seeing, it's one of the most disruptive, if not the disruptive, phenomena over the last 40 years. And as long as I've been involved in IT, which is a good chunk of those years, uh, it's definitely something uh, you know, I think is, is the most disruptive piece. So how do these things come together? Um, and the way we've thought about it is really trying to lay it out in, in sort of these four, actually five points, right? So the device, the front end, uh, is, is how we interact with all of the information, our identities, um, our, our lives at home as consumers, as well as increasingly at work, uh, are all essentially in the cloud. So you know, a, a, a safe identity with all of our information accessed through the cloud. Um, and the cloud becomes the back end. But really, what's happening now, and we've noticed this largely through the change in sort of our experiences in the social media, social network side, is we're not interacting with this information and our devices, laptops, smartphones, what have you, the endpoints, many devices per individual. And we're really starting to experience a very different type of interaction, and we're sort of getting things done. In the old sort of legacy traditional view, you had a view that systems of record were kind of the capture control points. Uh, and typical, for example, ERP systems were systems of record. They were control points. They have been control points. Now what's actually happening is through sort of bite-sized applications and services accessible through literally anywhere, um, we're starting to move towards more a set, sort of system of experiences, right? So we're layering on a bunch of intelligence, a bunch of work, a bunch of much lighter web-based business process and applications and services to sort of get things done. The device has now become sort of a get-it-done device. And so, you know, many devices for all of us, cloud becomes the back end, lightweight interactions um, between the devices, and not just sort of machine, but also the machine to machine element of it generates a huge amount of data. And so analytics to sort of make sense of it all. And then the last point I'm going to come back to a little bit later is this whole idea of taking the bring your own device phenomena, which has sort of been the last three, four years, sort of now unleashed itself onto the enterprise. And it's a whole new sort of style of IT that's got to take it on. Uh, Getting that whole phenomena together and tying it securely in the enterprise is something that is critical, not just for sort of mobile and how that will unfold, but also uh, true production workloads from the cloud actually being part of an everyday experience, right? It's, it's boring after a while to kind of just deal with email or some lightweight apps. You've actually got to work in a way that you actually get things done in the work environment as well. So that's how sort of we framed it. Um, you know, fairly obvious stuff, but for us it was a good guidepost to say we've got to look at big trends and see how all this comes together and how does this shape sort of HP's point of view 
Um, and then we think some implications for what we're all trying to work on, which is to build a truly open ecosystem of a world-class sort of cloud platform. So I think it starts with a concept in terms of getting to the enterprise, this idea of hybrid delivery. Um, and the way I want to frame this is we all talk about hybrid clouds. I, for one, don't like the term hybrid cloud. I, we don't use it. We think it's better to sort of think about it as hybrid delivery. Customers have hybrid environments, have hybrid clouds. As an IT vendor, it's our job to actually manage and deliver a set of solutions, cloud solutions, across different environments. So the way we frame it is there's sort of the traditional virtualized environment, private clouds, public clouds, and this idea of sort of managed or hosted clouds in between, where essentially it's a CapEx to OpEx transition as far as the customer says. They say, I don't want to sort of set up my own private cloud. I'd like someone to have it managed for me. So against that backdrop, delivering a set of services or a set of experiences for customers that essentially want to build uh, their cloud environments, infrastructure level, application level, data, big data analytics level, as well as just consume out over the internet or out over your dedicated uh, cloud environment, um, you gotta sort of balance the needs of that. So hybrid delivery, uh, what we've been focused on is the ability to be able to stand up not just private cloud environments, public cloud environments, and then run them for on behalf of our customers, but also do it in a common shared way. So increasingly, uh, there's a need not just to be able to deliver across this, but be able to kind of deliver, quote unquote, one stack across these environments. And that's a key part of what we think is going to drive adoption going forward. Let me talk a little bit about the public cloud space. It's been a very active space. If you look at it, um, certainly startups and developers uh, around startups, certainly SMBs, uh, have been quite well served. There's some major players in the space. Um, and the way that I think that market is, if you actually look at the startup world, I would say 80% penetration has occurred. Most Series B startups and above are essentially running their infrastructure for the most part on AWS. Right? And I think that whole market, the way it's been defined, really caters to the notion of sort of um, startups, you know, media workloads. Um, there's a lot of sandbox IT going on, but we're not seeing heavy scale production workloads. Uh, out there yet in, at scale. And there's been lots of talk. There's been obviously lots of uh, active conversations about what that means and, and what does that look like. Now, if you look at the startup and you look at the SMB space, there's a certain amount of spend there. But if you actually look at enterprise production workloads, it's probably 10, 20 times that spend. So if you actually do the math, we're talking about a very sizable opportunity uh, and really, a lot of those dollars have essentially been parked. If you think about infrastructure spend post Y2K, there was a freeze in 2003. There was another freeze in 2007. We're going through yet another one in the last year. And there's been an enormous amount of backlog built up. Core infrastructure upgrade, core application transformation, traditional apps, and a bunch of new apps. And what's happened is in the last five years, the bring your own device phenomena has essentially sort of been a proxy for a bunch of spend, and I call it distracted spend, uh, dealing with mobility. But core infrastructure spending, core transformation of data centers, next generation data center, cloud enabling data centers, cloudifying your infrastructure, your application level, your database, your sort of analytics layers are still a work in progress. And I, our contention is there's still many, many dollars uh, essentially sitting on the, on the sidelines waiting and watching to see what sort of happens. So there's a lot of interest in our work here. When I say our, I'm talking about our OpenStack community and what we're trying to get done. And I think it's critical, the next phase of this for us has to be how do we sort of make it real, right? There's been a lot of chat, there's been a lot of good ideas, lots of framing. We all as vendors have our own parallel universe of presenting cloud frameworks. But at the end of the day, it's now about getting to production workloads. So I think it's super important to think about what's happening in the public space. There's been a lot of adoption in sort of classic sort of new, new mobile, web 2.0. All of the new cool things are essentially moving to cloud environments. They'll be developed with tools in the cloud, in PaaS environments. They'll be running in a cloud environment over time in a trusted cloud environment. Uh, the question is how do you now tie that back to the traditional workloads um, that are sitting there? So, that brings me to a point about talking about you know, how we see cloud workloads. And again, this is you know, reasonably well understood, well out there, but we've sort of broken it out and we think of traditional 
workloads ultimately that have been typically on a virtualized environment. So you get to 70, 80% of a virtualized environment. You're managing clusters of VMs. Very different from setting up distributed cloud apps or services. You now have to deal with things like availability zones and a different networking model and a different sort of distributed model. Your, your apps actually have to be designed for failure. Developers have to think about designing a, an application or set of services around an infrastructure that'll be up or down. Uh, and that's been something that's sort of taken hold of the mobile space and a lot of the consumer side, a lot of the sort of web 2.0 space. But it's critical that we can lead uh, as an as a infrastructure and a platform and a cloud OS community that it's critical that we be able to tie these things together. So a big part of our focus is what are the requirements that bring workloads reliably to run uh, on a cloud environment? And not just public cloud, it really has to be a public private cloud. Again, hybrid delivery, the CIO of the enterprise is really interested in making sure that they can consume these services across all delivery models. Right, so if you look at workloads, they've typically been Web 2.0, mobile, cloud-centric workloads, easy adoption. They've sort of gotten out there. Um, a bunch of the companies here, a bunch of us are already familiar with that. Uh, the dev test model has been out there. It's well understood. But now, how do we move it from dev test to production? Uh, there's all kinds of storage solutions out there. I think there's a ton of innovation going on. Uh, in terms of the use cases, as well as all levels of infrastructure and innovation at the infrastructure and hardware and basic storage IP. Uh, phenomenal work going on uh, as we speak. But then once you start getting into sort of these, these you know, apps that are, are built for sort of reliability and are built on a certain infrastructure assumption, how do you now plan that and marry that view along both a private and a public cloud view? A lot of customers that we've talked to have given us a point of view that say, hey, we want the web scale of a public cloud environment. Uh, we want an OpenStack-like environment. But we also want all of the enterprise quality of service elements, security, performance, reliability, uh, DR, on and on. And so how do you sort of marry that too? So we're trying to spend our time really figuring that out. And you know, we've been, we launched the HP public cloud. Uh, this past May, it's been in public beta now. We're launching several services, and we're literally trying to learn as much as we can as we assemble sort of a common point of view for how do you bring private uh, and public together. So against that backdrop, this view that cloud workloads have to now be running across uh, really multiple delivery points, you know, my view is SLAs and orchestration are kind of the two things that really matter. Um, and, and what, what customers really want is an integrated experience around management and this notion of enterprise-grade quality of service. So what do we mean by enterprise-grade quality of service? Uh, an SLA that you can stand up and it's real. It's got real teeth. Uh, service, customer service goes without saying. It's sort of a default um, and lots of best practices there. This notion of a secure cloud uh, is really important. Uh, you know, and, and I think getting that point across uh, to a CIO and a chief security officer is, is uh, you know, there's a lot of work to be done there. There's not that many IT vendors that have been able to lay that out in a, in a reasonable way. We're certainly trying. We rolled out what we think is a fairly aggressive SLA. You can go check it out at hpcloud.com. We think it's one of the more progressive uh, SLAs in the environment. But I think the, the idea of sort of standing up and delivering quality service is one thing. The idea of orchestration is, is, I think, yet another. And when I say orchestration, I mean orchestration with a big O, meaning you have to deal with setting up service provisioning, cataloging, and enabling and deploying bare metal, uh, but also above bare metal VMs and sort of complete lifecycle management of VMs. But above that, a set of application level services um, at the platform level as well. So how do you, when a developer, whether at a startup or an SMB or an enterprise, is writing an app, she or he only cares about that runtime, right? Um, and the database that's, that's tied to it. Or oh, that's what they should be thinking about. They shouldn't have to worry about auto scale or load balancing or identity or security or a set of services they want to provision to. So being able to sort of tie those together elegantly and offer that as an integrated view, not just for the developer, but in the enterprise, for the IT ops side of the house, 
this sort of parallel sibling organization that's got to manage all the infrastructure that the CIO counts on for control points as they're seeing a whole bunch of sort of loss of control out to sort of line of business and application owners. The IT ops folks are critically involved as part of this equation. So delivering orchestration across that I think is vital. And I think one of the challenges we have to take up, um, and certainly HP's, we're, we're spending a lot of time trying to, you know, figure it out and get it right, is how do we drive this view together? How do you drive reliability and predictability with an SLA? And how do you tie it together uh, with an orchestration layer that ultimately gives you what we call a true cloud management points of view? Now, if you look at this conference uh, here, we've had some great announces through some, some of our partners and some of the companies here. There's been some cool things around networking. Some great alternatives around networking were announced. Uh, there was, a, uh, I think, some good stuff at the platform level. Uh, there's a great compute piece that added on through one of the announcements I saw. So I think there's a lot of work being done. But at the end of the day, the real measure is ultimately production workloads and how we're doing against that. And that, that's, I think, a key part of it. So my one you know, challenge to all of us, um, and certainly HP is thinking about this, is how do we get real about this? And how do we sort of focus on really production, true web scale grade, services on a global level? And then what's sort of the environment and the ecosystem to go drive that? So that's my point in terms of orchestration. So when you think about design points uh, across the board, Web 2.0, all the way out to, to true enterprise, traditional legacy environments, um, I think orchestration and SLAs and tying those together is something companies have to figure out. And certainly we're spending, our, we're spending a, lot, a lot of our time figuring that part of it out. And over time, as I said, there will be a common cloud OS or platform model emerging. I think that is our challenge. I think that is the open stack opportunity, right? And this idea that a common stack, a common architecture can now meet the needs of a multiple delivery model on a global basis at web scale and enterprise grade quality of service, um, I think is the opportunity. And that, by the way, folks, is hundreds of billions of dollars of spend not six billion or 10 billion, which is where I think the current public cloud market is, for example, best case, right? So you've got to think about it in terms of, this is now about dealing with global companies with global needs. And over the next 10 years, we're going to see a CapEx to OpEx shift. We will, you know, we will finish out our IT careers witnessing the change of a CapEx to OpEx world, right? And it's going to be driven by a set of adoptions that we hopefully get to be part, part of. So I wanted to frame how we've been thinking about it, spend a few quick minutes with, uh, with it, and this is sort of our, you know, what are we doing in the community and, and how are we doing. So we picked up the flag with OpenStack last June. So 15 months later, we've been fairly active. Um, we're learning a lot. Um, and you know, HP's had a fairly proud tradition dealing with open source. One thing I want to point out here is um, over the last six, seven months, we've become very active. We're going to be putting out some news around Folsom and our work there soon, so stay tuned for that. Um, but I just want to point out, make sure everyone's clear, we are very aggressive and I think progressive for a company of our size in terms of being involved with, with OpenStack. There's, you know, despite sort of a lot of talk, uh, we are actually actively promoting and then getting lots of sort of contribution back into the community. Um, and I challenge anyone to go actually go look up the facts. Uh, looking up facts tends to be trendy right about now. Uh, but but uh, this one really matters, and it's, again, <laughs> transparency. Uh, it's transparency. So, so please go check it out, and I'd invite you all to actually uh, go, go look at it. It sort of speaks for itself. Um, we've been very active. Again, it goes back to the points of what I think is all about production workloads, and our work here sort of really reflects that point of view. Uh, we've been particularly involved with getting OpenStack, as I'd say, at an ent enterprise grade credibility point of view. Uh, and I've been able to work with the foundation and being able to set it up. Again, I think you know, kudos to the entire folks, just not just sort of the foundation people, but all of the companies and all of the individual folks involved with it. Um, I think it's critical that we have governance and transparency go hand in hand. Uh, and I, it's great to see sort of the iterative process of it. So we've been pretty active there. Uh, we continue to sort of do a lot of work at the sort of, you know, nuts and bolts level with the community. We're doing a lot of work, for example, with the, the CI 
and the whole sort of you know uh, deployment process of it. Uh, we've got you know a fair amount of work there. Uh, a big part of our effort here for the next chapter is around this idea of bundling SLAs and orchestration and making it real. And for HP, OpenStack is a key part of that. It's not just about sort of a compute uh, or a storage infrastructure view. It's about a complete stack. And HP and Open, it's not just about OpenStack. We've been involved with open source uh, you know, for a while. All of these projects are actively part of the HP cloud. They're an active ingredient of it. So it's not just about HP IP, but it's about actually tying these things together and creating a more compelling, iterative view and getting it to be in an enterprise-grade experience is what we're after. Um, and one of the examples here, uh, we've been very active with the notion of deployment and automation. How do you drive automation? You know, I tell people about the HP experience on operating cloud services at scale. For a company of our size that's been typically a hardware infrastructure uh, player, running operating web services at scale and learning that experience is completely new, has been new. It's been quite a learning curve, a steep learning curve. Uh, but one thing we've sort of figured out and sort of I think are investing a lot of time in is the whole idea around sort of the deployment and automation um, life cycle and how do we get better at that. So I'm going to close with just a couple of quick points. Um, the Converge Cloud strategy for HP uh, really speaks to what we talked about. Um, so last spring, this past spring, we announced this as kind of a core strategy. It's really a framework. HP sort of coined the term converged infrastructure. And what it really was a few years ago was the basic hypothesis that said, tie server storage networking together, make it sort of next generation data center with a common backplane and deliver that. Well, since we did that, most of the industry has sort of taken to that. Converged infrastructure is now sort of a default view. So at one level, beyond all the marketing hype, converged cloud is basically a similar design point. It's the view that says hybrid delivery of clouds are going to sort of center around you know, two, three core models. How do you deliver private, public, and, and, and manage clouds? The business models around them are going to be different, but some core things are, have to be common. This notion of a common platform, of a shared level of SLAs, a shared level of architecture that can reinforce the notion of orchestration, management, security, provisioning is vital. So really, Converge Cloud is really an HP term. It's an umbrella strategy. What we've also done, I've been at HP about a year and a half, uh, and in that time, we've actually consolidated all of the different various cloud efforts under one umbrella, uh, uh, Converge Cloud business. Uh, so we've taken all of our R&D, and pulled it together. We've now sort of got a common look and feel. And the idea is we want to essentially build this around four architectural elements. And the OpenStack element is the core piece at, at the foundation level. So our notion of converged infrastructure as a service really speaks to the idea of tying a common set of compute, storage, networking, infrastructure bindings, and hardening that as a curation or a distribution of everything we do. Uh, is make it a fundamental piece of sort of HP hardware. Uh, and make it referenceable, make it sort of you know, credible from day one. And then on top of that, build out a management secure layer. On top of that, build out an analytics and a structured, unstructured point of view. Uh, and then finally, wrapper it with a common look and feel. Not just the notion of sort of one UI, but really a set of experiences that give customers across the world a common look and feel to accessing the HP clouds, whether it's private, public, or managed. Uh, so that's really what the Converge Cloud view is. So, and what, what the team that's largely involved with OpenStack has been the public cloud team, which is a good chunk of folks here. Uh, and our public cloud team, by the way, is where we're hiring. And for those of you interested, please check out our booth. Uh, we've got lots of cool things we're working on. So let me share with you in a couple of minutes here what we're actually doing. So for HP Cloud, our idea of the cloud is not just to deliver infrastructure, it's to deliver the full stack. So we're actually building out a complete platform stack. And with by platform, it's not just developer tools as in PaaS. Um, uh, for, for enterprises, you need IT ops tools as well. So there's a set of tooling and services we've got to build for developers, for IT ops folks, with which they can build and deploy workloads. For HP, our goal is very simple running as many production grade workloads with an SLA at as high a utilization as possible is our, is our business model. So with that, we've got to attract true production, large scale anchor tenants, anchor workloads. 
SaaS and ISV companies for sure, but we've got to give them a set of tools to be able to wrapper all that. And in addition to those tools, open up an ecosystem, a pretty vibrant uh, third, part, part, third party ecosystem that affords you a bunch of services. Now where we stand, we're never gonna build out a whole bunch of our services as other players are trying to do. They're trying to do the complete stack. Our goal is to be completely open and interoperable and partner. HP's had a history, a very rich history of partnering, and we think our, our focus on ecosystem will, will allow us to do that. Having said that, in our platform, we've built out services like database uh, as a service. We're doing analytics as a service. Uh, we're doing a bunch of other pieces. So the idea is we're tr constantly trying to balance out the notion of what is it that we think will add value to developers and IT ops folks building out and managing workloads, and how do we enhance the ecosystem by tying these pieces together. Uh, and then finally, the hybrid interoperability piece is my commentary on hybrid delivery. So being able to orchestrate workloads across multiple environments, up and down infrastructure and applications is vital. And that's what sort of that piece is. And then we wrapper this all with the notion of a marketplace where our partners and the ecosystem and all the different services ultimately end up getting monetized. So the point is, we're going after the enterprise production workload, but we're building a complete stack for what we think is, is that that serves the needs of those workloads, right? So we're delivering the sort of innovative way to deliver, you know, to do that. Our work here sort of reinforces that every day, but we're wrappering it with the notion of a true enterprise grade quality of service, an SLA that has real teeth uh, and working on orchestration. Those are kind of the things, and, and ultimately with a default view that it's ultimately all open. If you look at some of the alternatives, hypervisors are us, uh, or big, big sort of you know, integrated hardware, software solutions out there, you're essentially locking you in. And we think that, that time has sort of come and gone. And you can see some of the movements, you can see some of the affinities around companies that a few years ago were completely in single stack mode, and now are actually vibrant partners in this community, which is great. So speaking of ecosystem, I've said this before, we're only as good as our ecosystem. As a platform, we are only as good as the vibrancy of this ecosystem. So in addition to building out core infrastructure and platform tools, we're going to market with a bunch of these partners delivering solutions for customers at the enterprise level. So we've done a bunch of work in storage, in, in management, in platform, as I talked about, in dev test, the notion of taking dev test all the way to production. Uh, and honestly, this speaks for itself. We've got some fantastic partners, many of who are here, many of you know, here with us, uh, and we're learning tremendous amounts here. We don't think you can innovate fast enough um, and deliver these solutions uh, by yourself. So our goal is not to go try to you know, uh, do a better Panzura. I think we'll work with a company like Panzura. I think we'll work with someone like um, you know, Feed Henry or, or you know, some of the other, other tools out and, and services out here. So we're pretty excited about this. We've spent a lot of time learning and we're actually investing heavily in the ecosystem. This is our portfolio today. I just want to point out one thing. We stood up our public cloud in May, uh, middle of May, and we actually turned on a GA SLA backed service around object store and CDN within 60, 45, 45 60 days after that. Uh, competing services, other services that have been in the market were in beta for months. Um, so we're spending all of our time really trying to get this notion of a GA service with a SLA uh, because that's the way we think enterprise production workloads are going to get real on a cloud, on the cloud, right? And so this is a set of services we've built, as I said, with our partners and our portfolio. We're rolling out a whole bunch more, uh, so stay tuned for some good, good you know, updates there, but we're really sort of um, excited about sort of the next set of, uh, I think, work that we'll be doing around sort of the current release. Finally, if you haven't, uh, I'd invite you to uh, take a test drive. Please go check out HP Cloud and, and give it a shot. There's a, yeah, there's a, uh, a three month free access. We've got a booth up here. Um, I think Jonathan mentioned there's a party later on today, so I'd love to sort of meet you and get to spend some time with you in person. But again, I just want to thank all of you and really the community for the effort uh, here. What we're trying to figure out is how do you get to the production workload view? And we don't think it's, it's something HP does alone. We're certainly going to push very hard for it on where we think the, the landscape is. But I think it's, it's really the responsibility of the community here for us to sort of make it real. So at the next summit, you know, I'm hoping that we're going to get even more announces and a lot more use cases, a lot more actual uh, I think customers speaking and standing up and talking about how this is all getting real. 
So thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. Thanks for coming out. And we look to see you later on today. Don't forget to join us for our party later on. Thanks very much.